Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for our Village of Hall Committee meeting. Today is November 27th, 2023, and we'll call this meeting in order at 7.30 p.m. Can you call the roll, please? Trustee Dalzell? Here. Trustee Juarez Mendoza is absent. Trustee McLawhorn? Here. Trustee Murphy? Here. Trustee Navas Farza is absent. Trustee Peretta is absent. Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So um, I appreciate the students being in the audience tonight. We're not doing any voting tonight. This is a committee meeting, which we're just talking about what we're going to vote on next week instead. So uh, thank you for joining us, though, too. Uh, tonight, just uh, starting with our officer's report, starting with mine, I didn't have anything on the agenda this evening, but just a reminder, next Monday night, uh, this will be December 4th at 6 p.m., we're going to do our annual tree lighting uh, ceremony out here in the um, vestibule. Uh, we'll have the Girl Scouts here to sing Christmas carols. Um, and as you, we we're fortunate to have a donation every year we get from the Doubletree Hotel with some uh, other famous ch chocolate chip cookies and uh, hot chocolate from Eggman's Restaurant, and we appreciate their support um, to welcome the holidays. I believe today, too, um, Mike Freider, um, did you see, did they put up the Christmas tree today over on Veteran Plaza? Okay, they were supposed to do that today or tomorrow. I, I, Becky had it on my schedule for today, so we'll see if that went up today. How's it going? Uh, well, I'll wait to your report, though, too, Mike. But um, how's it going with Christmas lights? You guys have enough decorations for the poles and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, we ran short on some banners, but we're trying to get some orders right now. No, Mike, nobody's here. You want to sit at a desk? Go ahead. What, what were you saying? We came up short on uh, some banners for Pulaski. Um, so we're looking to place an order, get a couple, and hopefully just some stock print. Just some holidays, matters. ones yeah. that slide over the sticks. Right. Okay. Yep. So, but otherwise, uh, everything's up and looks good. Okay. Now, I really appreciate your department helping out too. Um, but uh, the decorations outside, um, Becky, my assistant Becky, did a nice job picking out something different for the front for door yeah, here more really or less nice, and yeah. stuff. It, it looks good. It's good. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Um, otherwise, I wanted to get on to some other business here this evening, so we'll go to our clerk's report, Clark Harding. Thank you, Mayor. I have the presentation of the November 20th, 2023 board meeting minutes and a presentation slash discussion of the 2024 board and committee meeting schedule. I put discussion in case anyone had questions or wanted to change any of the dates that I came up with. Um, otherwise, I don't need a discussion. You know mm -hmm. I, I apologize. Let's see what you had. So... Obviously, um, you do a great job of kind of avoiding um, with some of the holidays and stuff. My so. only, like, one that, not that it's questionable, but if you want explanation of July, because it is a summer schedule and there is a holiday. So I picked doing July 1st, which is a Monday, and that would be a committee meeting. I'm sorry, a board meeting. And then I skipped the 8th because Thursday is the 4th in case people took long weekends. So then we would do committee the 15th, board the 22nd, and then off the 29th. Or I can switch the 22nd and the 29th. I wasn't sure how you want to do that with the summer schedule. I know when there's five, because there's also five Mondays. And normally you skip the second to last and you do the last one. But I wasn't sure what you guys wanted to do. Well, I mean, I, I did look at that, and mm -hmm. I noticed the gap. And But then July 1st and the 22nd are the 1st and 3rd. Mm -hmm. So it, well, actually, it's the 1st and 4th. It's the 1st and 4th, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it makes more sense with the way you have it laid out. Okay. I just wanted to bring that one up because that one was a little wonky, so I didn't know if you guys wanted to change that or not. And I also know January we're skipping the first week. <laughs> <laughs> um, did I put that in there? We scooched the whole thing down a week. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's four Mondays in, I'm sorry, five Mondays in January, so I just skipped that first week since it's New Year's anyway. But again, I can mm -hmm. change that if you guys want me to do the meeting on Tuesday the 2nd and then skip the 8th or one of the other weeks. 
No, it looks good. Um, we only have a couple of Tuesdays in there. Yeah, there's only two this year. Okay. No, yeah, I mean, May we could almost skip that committee on Tuesday mm -hmm. and just start the summer schedule early. Mm -hmm. I, uh, <coughs> what, do you, what do you think, Board? Uh, any opinion on that? Uh, um, assuming the summer schedule in May as opposed to June? I don't have an objection to it. Trustee Alzo? It doesn't matter. Okay. This looks right. Okay. Great job. Why don't we, uh, Renee? Take out the 20. Why don't you, why don't you take that one out? We'll, we'll start our summer schedule starting in May then. Okay. So my only question is we're going to have board board. Oh, I, I'm, okay? I'm apologize. I apologize. No, just just eliminate that that other committee, and a board board is fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. I will make those changes mm -hmm. and have them in. Actually, just that change, unless right. you wanted me to change January or July, or are those okay? Oh, that looks good. Okay. Then I'll make that change before next week. And certainly, if there's if, if something comes up, we can always call a committee okay. meeting to it. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, and that is all I had, Mayor. Okay. Um. We don't need an attorney this evening. Engineer's report. Mike, did I, I talked to Jeff Agin today. I put in for an STP grant. Um, and again, STP standing for Standard Transportation. Um, um, I, my acronyms are off. Are yeah, over. mine are off right now, too. State Sorry. Transportation Program? Yes. Thank you. State Transportation Program. Anyway, um, it, it had to be part of a federal... Route, which is included, he, he, Jeff explained to me, our engineer Jeff Agan explained um, 119th Street from Pulaski to Costner is part of an FAU route. Correct. And um, Mike, again, FAU stands for? Um, federal, jeez, uh, FAU. I, you know what? It's. <laughs> well, <laughs> It strikes me right now. I'm sorry. One second, because we, uh, yeah, I hate, I hate these all the time. But um, <laughs> even, even C Maps got it on here with an F A. Uh, but it is a federal truck route. Yes. Sorry. I apologize. You know, these acronyms are just out of control. Yeah, so and it's not it, easily coming up. Right. I, I, I know. At all. <laughs> I know. It, it talked about everything else on there. Anyway, it was uh, so I signed up the paperwork for that for a grant to get that resurfaced from uh, um, Costner to Pulaski okay. as part of that FAU route. Um, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, with great. That too. Okay. Um, then we'll go to our public forum. Anyone in the audience wish to address the board tonight? Nobody? Then we'll go to our standing committee report starting with finance and IT. Trustee McGlohorn. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we will have the usual list of payroll and accounts payable for approval next week. And unfortunately, tonight our finance director was unable to be here at the last minute. But everybody should have received a memo from Maria outlining the request um, for next year's tax levy, along with a packet um, outlining the main bullet points and slides. So I don't know if anybody, I, I don't know if everybody had a chance to read that yet. Um, I mean, if there are any questions or if there's anything that we need to communicate back to Maria in terms of changes. Um, I would like to, Trustee, if you can read this, at least into the record, what we're looking at for these notes uh, for the memo <coughs> that we, we got. Um, sure. The, the recommendation from the finance director for the upcoming tax levy is an increase by 4.992%. Um, 
comparable and the prior, last year's levy was at 2.5 percent and the additional 2.492 percent being requested above that um, will will help offset in some areas um, we have three percent wage increases that are already committed to and as we just recently learned we have a seven and a half percent increase in liability insurance that will hit us in the next calendar year um, and then there's also uh, what else do we have here um, a number of capital needs uh, especially when we talk about uh, the public works roof <laughs> Um, but approximately one, $1.3 million of basically building repairs that need to be done in the next year. And so that uh, additional 2.492% will help cover um, the gaps that we have in those areas. And again, uh, the benefit of the public, a uh, tax levy is um, basically this is your part of your budget of the monies that uh, – surpassed your regular budget monies that we uh, need to afford government expenditures with. And um, she's going to present the um, next week, she's, we're going to have a truth and taxation hearing, or not a hearing, but a presentation rather, because we're not going over 5%. And um, everyone got some, everyone received information uh, with what those slides will contain. Should you have any questions on these, you know, please let Maria know, or even my office yet too. And um, let's see, you know, what was notable in here too is of maybe, um, let's see, of 23 suburbs in the in the south side here, 23 suburbs. Mm -hmm. Also, still ranks at about fourth, is um, having one of the lower, lower tax rates in the area, too, which is always nice to see that we are spending um, cautiously and within our means yet, too. But um, we're, we're fortunate to have to uh, keep our expenditures down. Right now, residential, um, oh, this was our EAVs, our equalized assessed valuation. Uh, Right. Uh, the, this is made up of residential is 37 percent, commercial 19 percent, and still we have a strong industrial presence of 44 percent. And she'll go through um, how our monies are being spent, where they're being allocated to. Um, the village's aggregate property tax levy breakout. So she's going to say that, and she's going to remind everybody how these uh, monies are being applied. Um, the one here, the, and when you saw the tax year 2019 to tax year 2023, over the last couple of years, uh, the village has been averaging, uh, let's say in 2019, we had a 3% tax levy. In 2020, it was 4%. And the last two years, it was 2.5%. And now we're at 2. Point, I'm sorry, 4.9%. So we, we've been fortunate to keep this under 5% for the last five years. So um, in the and what she's got on the last page here too is the, event, the events influencing the tax year 23 levy amount. In uh, 2023, the village board approved wage increases, um, which for fiscal year 24. Calendar year 24, is, as Trustee McLaurin said, saw an increase in health care premium there's also going to be a larger prices, uh, the replacement of capital assets in the next five to ten years. For the most part, tax levies always cover the police and fire pensions. And um, we've done, we're doing pretty well. Our, we'll have a report coming up um, at our next meeting with our OPEB benefits. That's our other post-employment um, benefit uh, trust that we established last year at this time, last November. And it did real well the first half of the year, but now it kind of backed down a little bit then, too. I think the return on that investment has been maybe for the past year is right around $800,000 was the net on that yet, too. Which still ain't bad. No, on a $25 million investment, mm -hmm. so not, not bad. 
No, and it, especially, I mean, her, her comment in, in her memo um, talking about where the OCAP liability is now, it, it, I, it just made me chuckle a little bit where she said a staggering $71 million. And I was like, wow, that's a huge decrease compared to where we have been. Oh, we'd start <laughs> off, we're, we're uh, like 135 or 140 mm -hmm. something like that, $1 million dollars in, mm -hmm. in, you know, of debt. Yeah, right. so I mean, it's still a large number, but we have come a long way. Um, chipping away at it. Chipping away at that. Exactly. I just had a quick question because sure. I know when we had talked about um, the vehicle stickers and it possibly going into the tax levy, are we doing vehicle stickers? Or are we still looking at other routes to do away with that and make up that income? Just because if we're doing the stickers, we need to get started on that. Cause we are. No, that's going to be part of this. Um, it is part of that. Levy. Okay. I didn't see it oh, written out in there, so no I just problem. wanted to be I wonder, sure. Let me and see I just how looked real fast. Yeah, it, it's not it is on there. identified see how I in there. I broke this out. Um, when you look at the tax year 23, the very mm -hmm. first column, um, let me identify this here for you real quick. We have road and bridge identified mm -hmm. at corporate. Um, it'll be it'll be included in the road and bridge. Okay. Uh, so what you're seeing, and thank you for reminding me um, about that too, is you're seeing nine hundred twenty-six thousand four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Four hundred and fifty thousand dollars of that money is um, for the vehicle, the vehicle stickers. stickers. Okay. So it was okay, perfect. It was my intent, and hopefully, I know the board seemed to be in agreement with this yet too. Not but we're going to uh, talk about this next week. But I want to eliminate vehicle stickers, and the monies that we collected for vehicle stickers, which was uh, the clerk's office did a study, and we average right around. Um, $410,000 a year is what we bring in for vehicle stickers. What vehicle stickers is too, just in, if, so everybody knows, the sticker that goes in the window of your car, that really represents a road tax. That's the money we use to repair streets. So collectively, when we collect that money, and that's what's in Public Works budget for road and bridge, we've been averaging right around $410,000 a year. That's just for the folks who paid. It doesn't include the scoff laws of the folks that didn't pay. So there's at least 10%, 20% that didn't buy stickers. And when we did that comparatively, when we matched it with the in industry, like in the industrial parks and all that kind of thing with business, they only made up like 10% of that money's at too. So if you took a number of like $450,000, they were buying $45,000 worth of stickers. So by putting this into a levy, everyone shares that same revenue without differentiating just dollar for dollar. And while industrial taxes are almost two and a half times more than what a residential tax is, um, they're, certainly gonna, they're certainly covering their share. So nobody's being shorted. Nobody, m not, more is not being imposed on, on others and stuff. Too. This is a fair share. So when you go down the street, although everyone won't have a sticker in the window of their car, you'll know that your neighbor is compliant anyway. You're, you're putting into a road tax you know, indirectly, let's put it that way, through, through, the, through the levy here. But as I say, it could be argued, Mary, that by putting it on everybody, then the industry is paying more than their fair share. Because if they don't own vehicles... But they're doing more than that even now, and they only represent 10% of that money. But as I'm saying, to put this additional $450,000, of which more than 44% is going to impact them, that doesn't seem like a fair distribution in my mind. There's, it, I tell you, when you go through and we don't go on private properties and stuff, we can identify maybe some businesses that, that lack the same, and that's why we're doing this is to combat that problem, it is the lack of purchases of those same vehicle stickers. Just to comment on that is that, to my understanding, the vehicle sticker is supposed to cover, in essence, some of the streets. It all, that's what it's for. Right? And then, so if you look at a residential household, let's say on average they have three cars, perhaps. If they're, some of them can't even put three cars on a driveway. Um, and then there's apartments and so forth like that, whereas an industrial counterpart has deliveries coming in and two from that, you know, so there is wear and tear on the road, even if, let's say, they, on average they have 10 vehicles or, or less, but then just mm -hmm. deliveries or staff coming in and out, there is wear and tear on the roadways 
So that would just be my take on it. Oh, duly noted. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I, I think just because mm -hmm. they're already paying the taxes that they do on their businesses, we're not imposing more on them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Too. Yeah. I mean, this does, but marginally, though, too, because it's been everyone's sharing the same money and stuff then, too. Correct. Okay. And, Mike, am I hitting this about right, too? Is that what you're seeing over the years that you're looking at this? I know this is more in my, in my wheelhouse than yours, but the monies mm -hmm. that, that we take in every year, that $410,000, $410, which, in my opinion, should be $450,000, um, you are. This is what you're using to repair streets. Yeah, I mean it goes into road and bridge, so some of it does go towards roads, some of it goes towards operations and public works. So it's kind of a general mm -hmm. fund, but it is for road and bridge. Right, and again, this is a government. You know, the tax levies are government funding government governmentally funded programs, which is what a road tax is. Yeah. So we can't we can't just use this for like a sewer or something like that because that's a segregated right. fund. Yeah. Okay. But um, Claire Cardine, thanks for bringing that up. Sure. I had that on my cheat sheet, and the <laughs> finance director has that, and she um, took ill this evening, so she wasn't available to come down and speak to us. She will be here in person next Monday for sure. And then um, that's about the only one that that kind of jumped out. Uh, like I said, on average, we um, we've been holding the line at right around 3%, and this one's at 4.9 this year and stuff then too. So any other questions on that at this time? I know, I'm sorry to some of the students, I know some of this might be a little Chinese to you with tax levies and stuff, you know, but um, this is very important to how we've been doing a great job. The board here has been doing a wonderful job, and especially our department heads, of keeping our, our spending within our means. But everyone's got, goes a little bit beyond this uh, to afford let's say the pension programs and so forth then too because um, and, and this is how we offset those costs from what we did with our budget that was approved back in july so um that's all we have for that and then um oh i'm sorry trustee mclaughlin anything else on that no that's all i have this evening okay Mayor. thank you then we'll go to our fire committee report trustee murphy no report tonight mayor Trustee, um, I'm sorry, I should have shared this with you before we got started, but um, the Fire and Police Commission will be holding another um, uh, examination for new firefighters. Mm -hmm. And he just put that list out. Uh, they have an ad that's going to be running in the blue line. Uh, on, it's blueline.com. Uh, that will be in there December 20th. The application deadline will be January 17th uh, by 4 p.m., they're going to hold a test on February 3rd at 8.30 in the morning, and the application fee uh, for that firefighter application is $30. And two. So it's $30 for each applicant to apply? Yes. Okay. And I know, you know, I know the, because um, this is a committee meeting we're having, obviously right now we're in committee session, um, I know your committee is working with the fire chief uh, regarding an apparatus committee uh, for like to replace the uh, ladder truck. Yes. Um, I don't know how far those discussions. Oh, I'm sorry, Trustee McLaren too. When I get done, I had uh, I just noticed I had time sheets. Oh, okay. Um, did we ever? I know we haven't done this yet, but we never made determination whether or not we want to pursue. What type of ladder truck? And forget the manufacturer, but are we going to? We the chief gave us a couple of options to replace the truck that we have now, which is commonly known as a stick ladder truck, where we just have a ladder coming off our fire truck. Or he was asking about getting a tower with with the bucket at the end and so forth. Did we ever? The committee was to decide uh, based on what. Uh, the suggestions were from the fire side versus budgetary uh, <coughs> capabilities on what we can do with that, mm -hmm. um, and there's there hasn't been any discussion yet on it. I have we haven't seen we haven't gotten together yet. Uh, they have gotten together on their side, but Trustee McLawhorn and I have not been involved in those discussions yet. Is it, they're um, still in fact finding mode. 
that's um, kind of where they're at. Yeah, the communication was leaving. of visiting different departments and different manufacturers. And I thought he was leaning towards the latter, latter, uh, because the, the offset from the roadway, he said that he had to cover an, an area further away from some of the offsets in order to get to some of the buildings. So you, I didn't hear that part. He's a he, larger extension. Right. He wanted a longer extension, but with the tower or without? Um, I thought it was I think with he the, wanted tower. the tower. Yeah. The ask was with the tower, right. uh, which comes with a hefty price tag. Right. Again, um, we haven't had a, a bucket on the end of that thing for, what, 25 years? It's a 21-year-old truck, right? And we've, you know, here you have a truck with 35,000 miles on it over a 20, uh, 22-year truck. So... The question is raised, is there a need? And this is what the apparatus committee is going to decide. Um, is the need, is the juice worth the squeeze, and, and uh, pursue it that way. The chief had told us uh, a regular stick ladder truck was approximately $1.8 million for a truck, and the tower ladder was anywhere from 2.3 to $2.4 million for the truck. That, those discussions were held here, yes. All right. I think we also should know how much training is involved to operate um, like, a, like a tower truck. As and well. personnel, too. Yeah. How many persons now would have to be on that truck um, in order to uh, make it run effectively? Yeah. Would you need two people on the ladder that bumped your personnel on the, tr on the truck up another person? That's so a that's good point. Would would you be affecting what what we commonly know as jump crews right now? Do we have two people in, in a you have two people in a fire truck and two people in an ambulance per house? Mm -hmm. Would would that change the staffing? I would say it would. I say if we went the bucket route, it most likely would. I mean that, that's a dedicated crew for sure. Right. You know? But obviously, that's what the apparatus committee is going to have to figure out. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, and again, the, in, the the point of this is to decide what is necessary and what is a luxury, so that when we do put this out to bid, that we're not stuck with one bidder again. That multiple uh, companies can bid on this. Chief said the only two departments in this area that I have them is Orland Park and uh, Bedford Park. So. And again, you know, it, it all comes down to, you know, is it a Chevy? Is it a Cadillac? It, I mean, you're, you have to decide what is important on the vehicle uh, so that other, uh, other factions can can uh, can bid on it. I think, like anything else, too, like when we when we're qualifying, it could be a piece of heavy equipment for public works. Is where's the, you got to just obviously the apparatus committee is going to have to collect data that's going to say how often is this apparatus being called upon. I think we reached out to the chief for that. I think Trustee Dizel had, had asked him a number of questions that he didn't have records for. So that, that determination is going to be really difficult to, to figure out. Right. Yeah, the chief said that they don't keep records of when the truck goes out. Well, it makes it makes the discussion difficult. That's mm -hmm. all. Because you know, if you knew you need a particular apparatus for, like, whatever, Mike, like a job that you're going to do or something, too. You would have an, a, you'd have a ballpark in, yeah. and because of its frequency of use. I think either apparatus is great, in my opinion. It just um, qualifying the thing is important to the, mm -hmm. the board, and it's certainly the taxpayers, too. Mm -hmm. So, okay. I just had a question. Has there been a uh, deadline established by the committee as to... If, you know, by this date, if we don't have key pieces of information, this has to be tabled, or is this like an essential piece of equipment that needs to be replaced? Just to, if you can provide some clarity on that. Um, I'm not aware of a deadline um, that uh, has to be made or that, that, that is out there um, other than the budgetary constraints of the fiscal year. Okay. I would guess. What's always concerning to me, though, too, is, and I get it, like anything else, it's got a life expectancy, you know, mm -hmm. the, the equipment does. And certainly, Mike, you know, with all your equipment, you know how long these are, should be good for anyway. Yes. But um, 
it's it's interesting when you take an apparatus that costs that much money and how much we spend on constant maintenance on, on, on the, the, these particular apparatuses even right now to think that when that next one comes in, it could be two years, that it's got, like, no value to it all of a sudden, yeah, too. That, that's the hard part, you know. But is it, it's interesting because <clears throat> I found a website um, completely dedicated to selling of used fire apparatus. Sure. And they actually had a ladder truck listed for sale on that site that is two years older than ours. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, Trusty Murphy and I found that with some ambulances way back when. Yet, mm -hmm. too. Uh, you know, there's actually sites for that all the time. Nobody really mm -hmm. wants to buy someone else's so-called problems. That's why people people are skeptical even buying used cars. Um, but yeah, no. Mm -hmm. But it just based, if they're able to, I guess I look at sell something that's older than what we what we have. It's got value. It's got value, and also, I mean, you would think, and the website, I mean, was was tire, entirely based in Illinois, mm -hmm. um, so you would expect that it would also still be in compliance. And and so it does bring questions in terms of the lifespan on ours as and, well. And where as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's an Illinois site that deals with mm -hmm. Illinois vehicles, you would think the condition of the body mm -hmm. would be comparable to ours. I mean, we don't have our equipment sitting out in the, in the rain and the snow. It's right. It's in a heated garage. You know, um, hence why, you know, some of the options that are out there that are being proposed are questionable. Sure. You know, so, right. again, you know, it's it's more to the point of, I use the adage, being a chef, is the juice worth the squeeze? You know, how much how much do you need, how much are you going to get out of this um, for what for what you're purchasing? Right. You know, if, if I equate purchases to to grills you see everyone who has an outdoor grill and it looks beautiful and shiny and nice on the outside but when you open the thing up and the grill and the grate and everything else is rotted and rusted and needs to be replaced motors transmissions that kind of stuff if the in innards are falling apart what good is a nice pretty shiny outside you do bring up some points trusty um in regards to let's say public works your equipment your machinery is like dealing with like plows and stuff like that and other heavy materials whereas so I don't know if it's a heated garage or not yeah okay yep. so, so I guess the wear and the tear and the use and stuff it might be different for you whereas on another vehicle no question salt plows <laughs> yeah. rust I mean <laughs> I mean one issue that comes up with vehicles once they start hitting that 20 year mark though is being able to get parts for that unit or the cost of that part for something that's 20 years old is skyrocketing at that point. So um, therein lies a, a problem with those units, you know, and it's better to replace in but most in, cases. In your instance, if you had a large dump truck and it was working fine and it was 20 years old, mm -hmm. you might hesitate to replace it because it's still functioning and operating fine mm -hmm. and life is good. Yeah. Whereas with the fire department, they're saying that after 20 years, the fire service no longer recognizes that as a viable piece of equipment. Therefore, it affects the fire rating for the community. So at 20 years, even if it was in perfect shape, they're going to sit there and say it's now cognitive towards the ultimate goals of equipment, manpower, whatever, mm -hmm. and therefore you need a new widget. Right. So in order to maintain the fire rating, that we're trying to, to maintain or, or even better, um, there's a cost to that, which is unfortunate because it's still a viable piece of equipment. Sure. They are held to a higher standard, their equipment, so. Understood. No, I saw, I mean, even, again, I mean, your, your business is quite a bit different than that, but, right. like, I, I just saw, we just put a new transmission in one of our big trucks and stuff, and, again, how much is as a new Sterling uh, and on one of those new dump trucks? Uh, right now they're about two hundred and thirty thousand. Yeah, and we just put a transmission for eight thousand dollars, give it some new life, and we're good. You know, and there's a huge difference. There's a monster savings. Uh, obviously, you felt that truck is worthy of it and stuff yet too. All right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
That's a well-built truck, the Sterling, right? That's is that a Ford product? I believe it is. I believe yeah. it's an offshoot of Ford. Yeah. Okay. It's it's what we replaced our Fords with. So I read all the I mean, when I'm signing the checks, I'm reading yeah. them all when I go through. And but it is something I will be approaching the board in a few weeks. Uh, the two Sterlings that I have, I'm going to be looking to replace dump bodies on them because I know that ordering new trucks, they're two three years out. Uh, the cab chassis are in decent shape low mileage it's just the dump bodies are completely worn out on them and need to be replaced i can buy another five seven years out of those trucks with simply replacing the dump bodies okay all right i like this guy <laughs> <laughs> that's what we would do at home we would you know make it work thank you uh trustee murphy anything else no sir that's okay. all uh we'll go to police and traffic safety trustee Dalzell. uh nothing for this evening mayor thank okay. you Thank you. Uh, Public Work and Boat Launch Committee? Uh, nothing to report tonight, sir, unless Mike has something to add. FAU stands for Federal Aid Urban. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I thought you were calling me a bad name. <laughs> All right, so that's that's the truck route, that was the state route we were talking about, about right. getting a grant for to resurface 119th Street from Costner to Pulaski. Correct. Okay. Will there be bike lanes there? Is that a plan? I do look to put bike lanes <laughs> down 119th, yes. Because I know there's a safe routes. I know the grant that was received, does that cover that area? Like the Costner, is that what we're talking about? No, the, um, we're looking to resurface but 119th the, Street. But there's another grant that was received for safe routes to school, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't cover like bike lanes or something of that? No, area. it's just sidewalks. sidewalks. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, we'll go to the next sewer and water report, Trustee Navas Barza. No report, thank you. Okay. Building and Health Committee. Uh, no report this evening, Mayor. Okay. Uh, Human Resource and Insurance, Trustee Murphy. No report tonight, sir. Okay. Economic Development, Trustee Navas Barza. Um, just one update. Um, um, information that I received from DCEO um, regarding the Illinois Back to Business New Business Grant Program. Uh, the grant is up to $30,000 for eligible businesses, and the application window opens November 30th, uh, and it closes July, uh, I mean, sorry, January 11th. And if you visit the b2bnewbiz.com website or just Google the Illinois Department, um, DCEO Department, they'll have information regarding the grant, and it's catered towards businesses that were established um, but we're not eligible for any grants or federal monies due to COVID. And that's my report. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Make a note on that. Um, Village Properties, Trustee McLaurin. No report this evening, Mayor. And uh, Ordinance Legislation Committee. Uh, I have a discussion and request to approve a new Illinois Public Act. Paid leave for all workers act as this action must be approved by 1231-23 and that is all. Thank you. So just a, a short conversation on this. We've gotten some information from our attorney Beth Adderd uh, on this. This is a new public uh, workers, uh, the paid leave for all public worker act uh, was, a, um, was approved uh, this past March of 2023. And what this does is this guarantees jobs that don't offer time off um, will now do so. So under the Act, employees must be given up to 40 hours of paid leave during a 12-month period, which can be used for any purpose. Part-time employees are entitled to one hour of paid leave for every 40 hours they worked. The leave must be available to the employees for any purpose, including illness, regular vacation, or personal days. So um, the Act also provides for, provides for specific rules regarding the use of leave. Um, this, this affects like specific rules, and what I'm getting at is this is in effect on existing policies. So in other words, employees must be allowed to use the leave for any purpose of their choosing. It cannot be required to provide a reason for the using the leave. Um, they've also got rules in here that minimum increments should be sought um, of at least maybe two-hour windows for taking time off so you don't, don't have somebody taking 
an hour off every day and that kind of thing yet too. It's recommended that the village adopt a minimum of a two-hour increment to prevent employees from requesting leave with little or no notice or even shorter increments. And you just leaving a half an hour early and things like that. So these are things that we need to establish if this is what the wish of the board, if this is what we want to do. Right now, just so everyone understands, um, all of our employees, most of, I shouldn't say all, majority of the employees that work for the Village of Alsip are uh, work under what's, what's known as a collective bargaining agreement. They're union employees, they have a contract. When those contracts expire, um, what, what they're saying in here too is when those contracts expire, collective bargaining unit employees, uh, the village is not required to make any modifi modifications to the leave provided to the employees who are covered under that CBA is this new act goes into effect January 1st of 24. However, upon the expiration of that collective bargaining agreement, the rights under the act may, be only, wa may only be waived for subsequent co collective bargaining agreements. In other words, if the waiver is set forth explicitly in clear and unambiguous terms in the collective bargaining agreement, in other words, in the absence of such a waiver, the collective bargaining agreement will need to comply with the requirements of this act unless we feel differently about it, which is what they're, what they're saying in here is the village can front, front load the leave required under the act or award the leave on an accrual basis. Front loading leave would mean that an employee is credited with all of the leave to which they were entitled at the start of the year, uh, which can be used at any time during that calendar year. If the leave is front-loaded, it does not need to carry over from year to year, sometimes referred to as use it or lose it. The benefit of front-loading front the leave is that an employee will not carry a large number of hours on the books. In short, it's going to make negotiating a little bit different, a little bit, you know, as far as we're, we're going to cross that bridge when we come to it, in other words, because most of our contracts aren't up until like 25 or 26. So the, these are still going to be in play for the next year. In conclusion, while the village likely already provides paid leave to all, to the full-time employees, the leave policies will need to be reviewed to ensure compliance with the act. Moreover, the village may not have paid leave available for the part-time employees, and new policies will need to be created to provide <coughs> minimum leave uh, as offered by the act yet, too. So. There's a couple of different suggestions that we can implement. And uh, again, because we are a home rule uh, municipality, the Illinois Municipal League offered uh, a template uh, to say that we can certainly opt out of all this because we are a home rule municipality. In other words, we, make, we can make our own laws here and stuff into our own rules. If a court was to determine that a home rule municipality may opt out of the act, the village could point to the section of the Paid Leave for All Worker Act and argue that it still is not required to comply with the act because it is covered by a municipal ordinance. I, you know, the, our, Beth gave us like three different ideals that we can look at on this yet too. And um, basically is three ideas based on the foregoing. The village has several options depending on how much risk of violating the Paid Leave for All Worker Act is willing to take. Um, it was, we could certainly, as I said, we can opt out of this altogether because we're a home rule community. Number two, we could, the village could adopt something similar to what the IML model ordinance was where it expressly states that opting out, that, I'm sorry, the Illinois Municipal League model ordinance where it expressly states that it is opting out but also adopts leave, uh, existing leave policies and provides leave for part-time employees with the intention of utilizing the Section 15 carve-out of this act. So this option would require some modification to the existing policies and provide leave for part-time employees. And then finally, the, uh, number three would be the village could amend its policies so they comply with the requirements of the act. This would involve modifying full-time leave to something akin to a PTO system, 
like paid time off, as opposed to what we have now is vacation and sick time, or some other modification that gives a rec uh, that gives the requisite leave to full-time employees. I don't think we're in a position to do that because we've got contracts with these folks right now. I think we cross that when, when the time comes. Like I said, it, it primarily, outside of the unions, you know, would apply to our department heads and um, a position like the the part-time person in the fire department who currently doesn't get paid leave, the um, you know the position, the other positions that we have in finance, IT. Hmm? But we're also mm -hmm. this will apply to the seasonal helpers too. And the seasonal workers, yep. Mm -hmm. And even with those with those folks, they work 14 weeks, mm -hmm. so it's one hour for every week you work. So they would get 14 hours of PTO. either mm -hmm. time off or we can certainly we can certainly pay mm -hmm. them the difference mm -hmm. when and they, when they get done when they, working when they're done. Yep. Of 14 and there hours. is the caveat in here that we can also. Um, and as, as part of our ordinance, that there is no leave taken during the first 90 days of employment. Hmm? It, that's if you had a program that didn't offer this. But yeah, you can you can you can defer. But is it? But even if we're doing it for the seasonal workers, for the part-time employees, when anytime we hire somebody new, right? You can say for the first 90 days you will accrue the leave, but you're not entitled to take it until Absolutely. after no. 90 Absolutely. Yeah, they've got that on here. But isn't that what this act is supposed to provide them? That safety net? If I'm understanding it correctly. Well, it does say in here that you can do that. You don't have to immediately mm -hmm. give them like, when, like in the first, like in the first week. You don't have to give them like, uh, like an hour off night, the week after. You can start with a 90-day deferred window of Got when it. you want to start that, just so you don't disturb operations and stuff. Then too, that's all. Mm -hmm. Didn't say, but in our case, it's primarily the part-timers and the seasonal employees that will be gaining time off that they didn't have before. Right. So this is, you know, I just wanted to start this discussion, obviously, this evening. This has to be approved by the end of, of uh, December because this goes into effect January 1. So whether we opt out or modify it, exactly. <laughs> we got to do so something So I'm not December. looking at, for a vote on this next week, but in a, in a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. I want to take this to a vote. So if you have everybody take a look at it, and if you have any questions, let's talk about it because we're going to have an ordinance drafted with our position on this and stuff yet then too. Okay. I mean, I would be in favor of a modified version of it. I mean, I have my kids in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, and part-time workers mm -hmm. also do need, have life happens as well. So I, I agree with you, Trustee. I actually like the number two option was mm -hmm. including the part-timers in this and stuff then too. Sure. Okay. Um, any other thoughts on that right now? Anything? And if you have any questions, certainly send them to me and I'll, I'll talk with uh, Beth on that yet too. Okay. And then um, we'll go to Planning and Zoning and Licenses Committee. Thank you, Mayor. I have a presentation of a list of licenses dated November 13th, 2023 through November 24th of 2023. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Anybody have any presentations, petitions, or communications they wanted to share? Anybody have any unfinished business? New business? All right. Can I get a motion then uh, to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We'll adjourn this meeting at um, 8.19 p.m. And uh, thank you for being with us. Uh,